Nature is so beautiful. It really is, and it's not just beautiful. Everything in nature also has a purpose. Well, not everything. Just look at this leaf. Sure, it's pretty because of these lines and the way the rain drops just sit on it. I also like how the upper side is darker than the lower side. But none of these things have any purpose. It seems like leaves are just there to decorate plants. Well, let's take a closer look at the leaf to see if you're right. We'll cut across the leaf like this and observe the cut surface under a microscope. Now, tell me what you see. Wow! This tiny leaf has so many layers of cells. What are those? The top layer is called the upper epidermis. The epidermis protects the leaf. It's covered by a waxy coating known as the cuticle. The cuticle is waterproof and prevents water from entering the leaf. That's why water just stays on top. It cannot enter the leaf. What is the epidermis protecting? The epidermis is protecting two layers of mesophyll cells. The mesophyll cells in this layer are tightly packed together. They contain structures called chloroplasts. The chloroplasts contain chlorophyll which gives the leaf its green color. The chlorophyll absorbs sunlight, which is needed for photosynthesis. Recall that photosynthesis is the process by which plants use sunlight to create glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. All living things on Earth depend on this food for energy and on oxygen for breathing. So I was completely wrong. Leaves have a very important purpose. I now know that the structure of the leaf supports photosynthesis. But photosynthesis also needs water and carbon dioxide. Where do these substances come from? Remember those lines you saw earlier? These lines make up the vascular bundle of the leaf. Just like the human body has arteries and veins, plants have xylem vessels and phloem vessels. The xylem vessels transport water from the roots to the leaves. This water is then used for photosynthesis. When glucose is produced during photosynthesis, the phloem vessels transport it from the leaves to other parts of the plant. I can see plenty of empty spaces around the xylem and phloem. Yes, the mesophyll cells in this layer are not as tightly packed as the mesophyll cells in the upper layer. The empty spaces allow for the movement of water vapor, oxygen and carbon dioxide. How does carbon dioxide enter the leaf? Does it also come through the xylem? No, carbon dioxide enters from the bottom of the leaf. This bottom layer is also covered by the epidermis. But if you look carefully, you'll notice the lower epidermis is full of tiny openings. These openings control the exchange of gases and are known as stomata. So you now know that the sunlight needed for photosynthesis comes through the upper surface of the leaf. The water comes from the xylem in the middle and the carbon dioxide comes from the lower surface of the leaf. The leaf is flat, so it can absorb lots of sunlight. It's thin, therefore all the materials for photosynthesis can reach the inner cells easily. So the structure of the leaf, from the very top to the very bottom, supports the process of photosynthesis. Why is the green color in the upper surface darker though? Time for a fun fact! The tightly packed mesophyll cells in the upper layer are also known as palisade mesophyll cells. They contain a lot of chlorophyll to absorb the sunlight. This chlorophyll makes the upper surface dark green. 
The mesophyll cells shown below are known as spongy mesophyll cells. They contain chlorophyll, but the cells aren't as densely packed as palisade cells. As a result, the lower surfaces of the leaves are usually lighter in color. So everything in nature is beautiful and everything has a purpose. Let's summarize what we've learned. The entire internal structure of a leaf supports photosynthesis. The uppermost layer is called the upper epidermis and the lowermost layer is called the lower epidermis. Both are coated with a layer called the cuticle. The inner layers of cells are known as mesophyll cells. These contain chloroplasts where photosynthesis takes place. Water enters through the xylem vessels and food leaves through the phloem vessels. Carbon dioxide enters through openings in the bottom surface called stomata.